Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, here we are. It's the Ramble, ready to roll, to rock and ramble. Oh, I hate that. Uh, until uh, until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time, uh, or excuse me, Eastern Time. It's we're we're through with daylight savings, right? Yeah. Why am I saying Eastern Daylight? I'm st- I've been saying that every night. You know, once you start writing that on the checks, it's forever before you... Anyway. Uh, Hi, how are you? Glad uh, you've joined us this evening, and I think you have joined us on a rather auspicious evening because, once again, we we talked to someone who uh, we formerly were married to, and tonight, I think, is going to be very, very special. Ladies and gentlemen, I always like doing this. Uh, Lake Oswego, uh, Oregon is a place I am not totally familiar with, but it's right next to Portland, which I am totally familiar with. I've been. Why through- are you familiar with Portland? Well, I've been through there a few times. You know, okay. <laughs> it, it's uh, Portland is the stop on the way to Seattle. Right. <laughs> yes. It's a pretty nice town, though. This is I mean, Ron- this, pretty- by, by the way, this is Ronnie Bennett. Let me just say that. So you know. And if you're wondering why she has the same last name I do, it's because we used to be married. Right. Uh, used to be. A long time ago. You, you figured it out to be how long ago? Well, we've known each other for 60 years. And we <laughs> broke up in 1971. 60, I, mean, I met you at 18. Yeah, that's about right. Mm-hmm. That's about right. Uh, you, uh, we, you were at a place called the Old Town Coffee House. Right. And I pulled up in a car. I can't remember who was driving it at the time. You probably maybe remember. I don't. Uh, <laughs> a long time ago. And he said, I want to pick up my friend Ronnie. So I went, okay. Where were we going? Yeah, 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 huh? Where were we going? I had no I have no idea, but he wanted to pick up his friend Ronnie. So you got in the back seat of the car, and I assumed that Ronnie was a guy. Oh, and you couldn't tell by looking. And I couldn't tell in the dark because you were kind of a tomboy at the time, and you, you know you weren't all gussied up and stuff. And and then I looked over, you know, oh, it's a woman. Oh, hi, hi, Ronnie. You know, and I got, of course, my whole demeanor changed. And that's how we met. You know, you remember more than I do. And you had an apartment right next door to the Old Town Coffee House. Well, three doors down. Three, was it three doors down? I thought it was right next door. No, three doors down. And I worked there part time on the weekends. Yeah, yeah. So it's a waitress. Yeah, yeah. Long time ago, folks. Yes, it was. Back when dinosaurs ruled the earth. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, I was talking to somebody, I was talking to Will Durst uh, just before we did this thing today, although they play on two separate days. Um, about the fact that when I was younger, you know, we talk about about how bad things are now. They were pretty bad back then with the McCarthy hearings and all that crap that was going on. You know, it was pretty, it was Salem witch trial time. (laughs) Not quite, not quite. It was, no, I mean, the McCarthy, the McCarthy era was pretty awful. Maybe it was the first awful political uh, event in our lifetime, in our, our life, adult lifetime, our anyway. Lifetime, yeah, yeah. The, you know, we've had them before. I mean, it, it's not like, it, it, folks. This may not be the worst, but it's close to it. Okay. Now. Yeah. Well, I, what I like to say I don't, is, I don't think you can. I think it must have been a terrible time leading up to and during the Civil War. I mean, so long ago, there's well, nobody around to talk about having been there. But yeah. Um, I, I don't think. I, th- I think that must have been a terrible time in the United States, and certainly the Depression. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I like to say uh, that, uh, you know, um, compared to Trump, Bush isn't looking that bad. <laughs> and, and I said, come terrible. to think of it, compared, <laughs> compared, compared to first daddy Bush, Trump isn't that bad. In fact, compared to Nixon, 
Uh, 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 Careful, uh, Maybe we should just skip comparison. Wait a minute, Nixon isn't that bad. And then I go even further by saying that compared to Hitler. <laughs> no, no, no. You Hitler know about wasn't that rule. That bad. Uh, what do you think about Khashoggi? Uh, uh, well, I think he's dead. Well, uh, I don't mean that, of course. Yeah, I think he'd been chopped I mean, up. The political and situation and what our leaders are doing about it. You know, uh, it, 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 the the question he brings up is, do I put people of Boeing out of work? Uh, and I think, have you read deeper than that? Huh? Well, 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 that's not really that's not really the only other choice. Uh, uh, right, right. But I mean, I don't. Uh, I, I think we should cut out the arms deal. I think we should just penalize. It, it may not penalize them terribly because they'll go somewhere else and make a deal. But we shouldn't be doing business with, business with them for moral purposes, for moral reasons. Let me see if I can say this right. I'm sure you can. I'm not so sure. That in that now infamous interview on Sunday on 60 Minutes with yeah. Leslie Stahl yeah. and the president... Uh, when he was asked about Christine Blasey Ford and what he said about her after the awful things he said about her, he said, oh, it doesn't matter because we won. I think that's all you have to know about this man and what he stands for. That's, and it's the same thing as worrying about selling the arms and getting X billion of dollars, which we wouldn't anyway, but then he doesn't know that because he doesn't know a lot of things. But... I, do you need to know anything else than those two things to know what a monster the man is? Oh, no, I, believe me, you don't have to sell me on that one. You know, I mean, I just, uh, I can't believe that we have this man as president, that, that America came to this, you know. Uh, and and it's it's kind of sad. It's very sad. It uh, goes without... Um, What's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, it's terrible. It's just terrible. That's all there is to it. Yes. Um, so anyway, you got some things you want to talk about? <laughs> well, there's been an event since we did this last. Yeah, yeah. Um, which we've already discussed. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. That, so people watching knows that this is not the first time. <laughs> we've talked about it, uh, right. Shall I, um, shall I act shocked when you say it? You're right. <laughs> yeah. um, is that you know, most people who've watched this or read my blog know that about 16 months ago, I was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and had the Whipple surgery, which is, it, God, is that an awful surgery? It takes forever to recover. But after several months of recovery, a uh, test showed me what the doctor said to be cancer free. And so it's been. And then this last week, a week ago, a new CAT scan showed that the cancer's back in a lung and in my peritoneum. Whoever heard of that? Whoever gets to say peritoneum? Did you in look it life? up to see where it is? And, and, well, I think it's somewhere in your abdomen. You know, I haven't looked it up. <laughs> but, uh, but the difference between the last time is that this is really not treatable beyond if I wanted some chemotherapy that will that it won't it, it can't kill the cancer but it can slow the growth so that I have more healthy time until the end comes so that's not the most wonderful news anybody ever had right 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 yeah um I just have to, the reason I do I don't know if you have to know this is that ever since the surgery last year, my nose just gushes for no good reason uh, yeah. now and then. And I mentioned it to a nurse uh, at, at the center where I go for all my treatment. She said, lots of, of surgery patients say that afterwards. Nobody warned me. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm laughing to hear about something else. It's not very funny. Um but I'm 77 years old. That's a good lifetime. Yeah. And uh, and I'm not. And, I mean, the awful irony. And I wrote this on the blog this week. The terrible irony for the moment is that I feel as healthy right now as I have at the healthiest times of my life. The only thing different from before the surgery for me mm -hmm. is that my stamina is down and my energy is down, and 
even without these secondary cancers, I don't think they would ever have come up very much further than they are now. But in general, I am really feeling healthy. And so that makes this very hard to believe. I mean, I believe it. I know they're right. I'm going for appointments I need at palliative care and other things. Um, and making the decision about the chemotherapy and so on. But I think I don't really believe, I think I don't know it yet. There's a funny balance there in the middle of, because I feel so good. Well, if you were so if, if you were so And then yeah. I know it's true, and I feel there's this heaviness. And that doesn't mean I don't have fun laughing with people and do everything that I do in life every day, but there's a little heaviness that's settled on me. Um, but what, well, what happens is, I, I know this is probably with the case, you wake up in the morning, you open your eyes, say, it's another bright, shiny day, oh my God, I'm still dying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. But you know something, I, I, I could say... So far, I don't remember any dreams that relate to this either. In a less lethal way, I could say the same thing. You know, I'm 78 years old, I wake up in the morning and go, oh my God, I'm dying. You know, I mean... Uh, well, the difference between the... You know, the, that old saying that we're all dying from the moment we're born. The difference between that and where I am right now is that, although it can't be exact, there is a time limit. Yeah. I know, the, the, the difference being I know the time limit. Yeah. Which you don't, and I didn't before this week. And so you can pretend, I mean, I'm 77. After I started feeling so good, after recovering from the surgery and having the no current cancer you know, the doctor's telling me that, is that I could pretend I was going to be here for another 20 years. You know? Yeah. Yeah, well. Um, and now I can't. Mm. Well, and, now, uh, you know, I when when you told me this the other day, uh, it, uh, it, boy, you're, it, that light in the back, you're kind of, your face is kind of dark today, but it's okay. We can see you, so don't worry okay. about that. Uh, when when we, when you first a little bit yeah well that shine it in your face or something but anyway don't you don't have to uh, when you told me this the other day uh, there were all kinds of different emotions that went through me for mm, the next 20, tell me. for the next twenty four forty eight hours I mean uh, one of which was you know we were married. So in a way that makes you family, you know, yes. no, no matter, I mean, if I had never made friends with you again and we had never talked again, then I guess I wouldn't have to be dealing with this right <coughs> now. But, but fortunately we did. And um, we've had many very good years of, of uh, being friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, but because of that closeness, uh, I'm especially, I was especially hit by this. Uh, and also, I mean, there's my f own fear of death, my own fear of mortality that plays into this, but uh, that would be a very selfish motive. Uh, doesn't mean be, just because we can label something like that doesn't mean it isn't real, that you don't feel it. Right, exactly. No? And so uh, I was kind of feeling, you know, I was putting myself in your position and so on, uh, and uh, all things considered, you're taking it very well. Well, uh, I, as yeah. I said, I don't think I truly believe it yet. I, and I'm so damned healthy. There's not a twinge of pain. Are you, are you in the Are you in the denial phase? They say there's denial, acceptance, I, what the blah, blah, blah. Are. But um, and I'm not gonna. You know, I've read that stuff a lot over the years, and particularly a lot about dying in the 15 years I've been doing that blog about what it's really like to get old. And of course, this is part of it. This is well, uh, cancer is one of the diseases of age um, that more old people get than people of younger ages. And did you know, by well, the way? I, mean, I wake up. Look, I wake every time I feel an ache or a pain. I say, "Is this what's going to get me?" You know, I, I feel that at this point, in my at this point in my life, there is a natural force that it's pointing its finger at me and saying, "Not yet, but soon." You know, mm, that's not right. yet, but soon, yeah. and uh, and I keep waiting for what that thing is going to be that's going to get me. 
And uh, so far, he died it, of. And no, I, see, I can say that yeah. I, she died of cancer. You can't say anything like that yet. Well, you know, you've got an advantage here. Like, you don't have to worry about gaining. If you gain some weight, you don't have to worry about it. Oh, wait a minute. There's you know? more than that. Yeah. Um, for some reason, you know, all during the post surgery and months after that, uh, or, and before that too, I was losing weight like crazy after a lifetime of taking off the same 10 or 12 pounds over and over again and when i talked to the oncology nurse about it way back she said that cancer and chemotherapy eat up energy faster than a healthy body so your body's using up more calories eat 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 she kept telling me eat 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 and um and she said you know she wanted me eating all this fat and all this protein that i hadn't been eating before and I said, I don't really do that anymore. She said, you'd better because the cancer will kill you long before the diet will. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I'd been eating, 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 eating. And then after that kind of began to smooth out and I could go back to my old way of eating. Um, and then I realized in the last two months, I've gained 10 or 12 pounds, which I really understand. I spent a lifetime living that way with the same 10 or 12 pounds going on and off all the time. So when we had the meeting last week to discuss what's happened um, and that, that the chemotherapy can perhaps extend my healthy or feeling healthy life for longer than without it, um, she said that... Um, again i'll have the problem during that time of losing too much weight and i told her that i just gained this weight she said good you've got a buffer you're going to need it <laughs> wow well you know um as i say it it you know it hit me uh, profoundly and uh um it, it, it you know it, it what it also presents to a person that isn't you is how to handle it, how to react to it, how to respond to I it. I worry how to, about that. How to beat? I worry how, about yeah. because I'm not going to keep it a secret. I'll, I'm not going to go out and, and carry a sign around, but I'm not going to keep it a secret when it comes up appropriately. And I worry about people don't know ever know what to say, and so I have to figure out and I'm working on it, figure out how to make it okay for people to know this. Yeah make it not uncomfortable anyway for them right and i haven't quite gotten there yet but i'm working on it well uh, you know i mean uh your your demeanor i think probably does more than anything but it's still you're, it's still very difficult for people to know what to say or what to do you know mm -hmm. i mean uh this kind of diagnosis not only affects you and of course it ultimately affects you <laughs> but it does affect the people around you as well you know, uh, we and get to laugh by the way, all of us, huh? We get to laugh through this too. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Now here's the thing: you have spent uh, how many years now with this blog? Fifteen years. With what the blog? Yeah. Fifteen years. Fifteen years, and it's been what it's like to get old. And this and, is part of it. And now you're writing about this, and this is part of what it's like to get old. I mean, and uh, long after you're gone, and I hope that is longer than we believe. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what you've written, which will probably stay up there, will be valuable. You know, it'd be valuable to people as a document of somebody's life. Well, and and how to leave it. We'll see. We'll see what I can write. You know, uh, what amazed me. Uh, in the it, first by the way, if people. If people let, me just, let me just say this: if people haven't read her. Uh, it, it's it's time goes by dot net okay she's a phenomenal writer and i say that as somebody who doesn't do much reading <laughs> <You're so funny. laughs> uh, i forgot what i was saying yeah. <laughs> oh oh after the first two pieces that i wrote it was just a outpouring of people a lot of names i recognized from people who comment frequently but many more names of people who've never commented and among all of that the number of people who have either survived cancer or are currently going through treatment or uh, have have survived treatment and are living without cancer, and I know that they're living the same way I did for most of the last year up until now, 
of dreading next time you have to go take the test to see if there's if the cancer has come back. When it, as it gets closer to that date for that scan, you get I anyway get quieter and more worried. And uh, up until now, it you know I came out feeling great, different this time, but an amazing number of people have not only cancer but the other diseases of age too that can be very debilitating. And um, one of the things I found out that fascinates me is that of, uh, just in America, this isn't the world, that whatever, however they did the research on this, 40% of Americans will be diagnosed with some form of cancer before they die. And think about what that means if it's 40%. Now, we're including skin cancer and things like that. Any kind of yeah, cancer. We're yeah. talking about cancer. And people do die of skin cancer, even right. if you don't think so. And um, But what's amazing about that number, 40%, is that that pretty much means that every person in America has been or will be touched by cancer, if not for themselves, their husbands, their wives, their children, their grandparents, somebody, good friends, mm -hmm. somebody near them, they are going to deal with cancer. It is 100% of us deal with it in some manner. Pretty amazing. That it's, I'm, it's, I'm, deal and, I'm dealing with it right now. Yes, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and so, it's by the, so by the way, disease. so by the way, is this audience right now? You know, because they've been watching you over these many months, a year or so, and and uh, I'm Has sure they've come. That long? They, uh, I don't know when we started doing, uh, and, and gotten to know you, you know, gotten to care about you, and so they're being affected by it. Sure. You know, so I mean, and it, think it, about that in every. Thanks a lot. There we is. really well, thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. We'll see what happens. I'll try to write. I'll try to be honest. You've talked about something, and I, I don't know if it's premature to bring it up, uh, but you, you talked about, to me, about the fact that in your state you do have the ability to decide when you're... It, well, I, it, I don't know. I, none of those phrases. I don't like, you know, there's, it's called a death with dignity law. <laughs> oh, I see, and, yeah. And a compassionate something or another yeah. law. And suicide... I'm not happy with any of those those ways of, you know, quick, short description. But the point is, I took care of my mother when she was dying of cancer. I didn't do the major caregiving, but I was spent some time with my father when he died of cancer. Obviously, I come by this honestly from my family. Uh, didn't, but, you, didn't you move to Sacramento for a time in order to yes, take care of I your did mother? Yes, four months yeah. to yeah. take care of my mother. And that was back in 92 when she died. But... Um, uh, I've seen what happens, you know, and it, uh, it, it after I, af, when, when it, symptoms start appearing, it's never going to get better. It's only going to get worse. And when I talked to the oncology nurse last week and I brought up that law here, which there are really only two requirements in Oregon. A doctor has to certify that you have less than six months to live and, um, and you are, lucid enough to sign the papers and understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, and I certainly will do that. <laughs> Reserving the right to change my mind, but I can't imagine why I would. And when I talked to the oncology nurse about that down the line, I said, you know, what I want to know is how do you know when is the right time? Now it's time. She said in her experience, and this is a woman, 60, maybe early 60s, yeah. she's been doing this all her life. She said, people know when the time has come. So I'm relying on that. She's got a lot more experience than I do. Well, you know, I, I you know, it, it, for me, it would be a difficult thing to do. But I suppose if you get to the point where you're in a certain amount of pain that you know is not going to mitigate itself, that it's not going to get better. Uh, I think that's the time you probably then go, sounds like a good idea, yeah. you know. But let's not think about that right now. Let's let's. Well, think, I have to. Let, I have to decide. Or something well, you, that will come you, up. You don't have to decide it. You don't have to decide it today. You don't have to decide anything. All you well, have to decide about is. I'm thinking about it goes into the decision, you know, and uh, I'll discuss it more with the palliative care people and with the nurse and doctors and stuff. Well, here, here's my suggestion to you, among other things, uh, in the in the next well, couple of years that you have here, uh, 
I, so. Do we? I don't. Yeah. I, Time I, is I, not listen, not I'm hoping I'm hoping, you know, uh, um, that, you know, that you outlive me. OK, uh, mm-hmm. but that doesn't look like it's going to happen that way. But the point I'm making is, is that, uh, uh, you know, you, you can do a lot of things that are really positive in your life, like max out your credit cards. <laughs> Not really. Not really. I mean, do you um, have anybody who's going to have to pay them off when once you're gone? Uh, yes, there is, and so that is, it's not possible. Huh. But I stopped because I've been very diligent for six or seven years about my exercises five days a week. As soon as they told me, I quit. That's it. Done with that. I hate exercising. I, so I do I'm too. Done with that. I do too. Um, and somebody mentioned on my blog that um, I will be, I will probably be relieved to say, seeing whatever the end game of the Trump era is. And actually, I've been saying since two, uh, 2015. Your first thought to I me. I will be very, listen to me, I will be very pissed if I die before we see the end of the Trump administration. So I am pissed you have already. A, well, you have a reason to live. Uh, yeah, we could look at it. That no, way. The, it was funny because about the second or third thing you said to me when you first told me this was, you know, I won't be here to see how the Trump thing resolves itself. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, everything comes to. It may not feel like it right now, but eventually everything comes to an end. I want to know how it happens with Trump, and I won't be here probably. Well, Bam. Uh, listen, Bam. <laughs> well, listen, we'll hold a séance and get the word to you. Okay. Uh, okay. Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> I like that we can laugh about this, you know. What else? You know, the thing is, if you feel good, you're doing things you enjoy. Um, you know, oh, by the way, I can go back to eating all the foods I like because i got to keep my weight up. So all the things that are bad for me but that I like a lot. And, um, you know, until it starts to be painful and still it's, until it starts to do what it's going to do to me, yeah. I don't see... What, what else am I going to do but go on living the way I want to live? Well, there's no, of course I have to do that. There's no question about that, you know. And uh, I, I just, uh, you know, I, uh, if anything I can do to keep your spirits up, you know, and, just, and, 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 and do the right thing. The, the, as I say, the hardest thing for me is to know what is the right thing to do. So I just go with my gut, you know. Well, you know, I mean, what could you do wrong? Uh, or anybody. I mean, using you as standing. Oh, I could stop calling you because I don't want to deal with it because I don't want to deal with it because people are afraid of dealing with something like this, you know. And Mm -hmm. you may find that some people you know kind of back off because of the nature of the thing and others will, people you didn't never expected will be there for you. So, and you can't blame the ones who back off because some people, it's like I told people, some people said, uh, oh, so-and-so never came to my mother's funeral. I said, don't blame them. You know, they don't want to go to a funeral. They don't want to, you know, that's something that they, they, so you can't hold it against them. You know, you're, you're, you're sliding into something that's really important for us to know and think about is that all of our younger lives, this seems to me when particularly really, really young in my 20s and maybe 30s, or maybe it was the time, the era, I don't know. But people always made wonderful, I remember us making lots and lots of jokes about being dead someday or dying and that we were terribly brave about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't think we really understood it was real. I mean, when you're 20, you just don't, you don't believe that. I, I have, I believe for years and years and years that you were going to die and everybody else, but I'm the one immortal. Oh, well, this whole and, thing about, 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 about uh, she was so brave. She was so brave. Well, I, I want people to say he was screaming like a little girl, you know, <laughs> because I wouldn't put up with it that easily. I'm not, I, you're doing better than I would be doing right now if I'd found out. Listen, it's, it's barely, the information is barely a week old, a, a week and a day. Mm. I have a, you know, I, I think that they don't know for sure, but they told me that if the chemotherapy isn't too rough on me, um, that it can slow the growth of the tumors enough that I might have six to eight months of healthy life what mm-hmm. you know before symptoms start to kick in mm-hmm. and um uh so 
I forgot where I was going with that thought. Um, it's it, it's not it's back to not quite real. Yeah, yeah. That if you how can you feel this good and be given a death sentence? I don't you know you, you I, don't I haven't understand. captured that for myself yet. That makes no sense at all. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. I hate to say that now. Uh, <laughs> Funny, yeah. Save that. Well, so Ronnie, your time's wait, up. Your time's the up. Podcast after I die. Oh. Keep that in the back of your head. We've run out of time. We, uh, Maybe that's my epitaph. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, mine's going to be. I told you I was sick. You know. Yes, so. of course. It is. <laughs> uh, love you, Ronnie, and I. I you know, I, and uh, let's keep doing this. You know. Okay. Really sure. good, ladies and gentlemen. Ronnie Bennett. She's dying. Is that is that proper for me to say? <laughs> but then again, aren't we? All? I don't know. Let's just experiment. You know, <laughs> okay. see what happens. It's a work in progress here, folks. Thank you, Ronnie. <laughs> see you soon. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. And that is my uh, ex-wife, uh, Ronnie Bennett, and she will be with us again in a couple of weeks. And uh, and for all the, I hope she's with us forever, okay, on this program. But well, whatever, uh, uh, we'll take it a week at a time, uh, take it and see what happens, okay. By the way, I just heard from uh, Tom Yamaguchi, who who made a point that uh, daylight savings time is still in force. You could fool me by how dark it gets early out there now, but uh, when, Tom, does it change? Uh, that I don't know. So anyway, uh, that's what an idiot I am. I've just become, uh, today I am, my mind is like jelly, okay? Uh, to begin with tonight, I couldn't figure out why we couldn't get, our, our playlist wasn't playing. And all of a sudden, I realized, after trying any number of things, that it was because they were doing the sports show on Wednesday night. Now, we never do that except one day a week. And so uh, I was an idiot, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong <laughs> with the network. And last night, I couldn't figure out why Jack wasn't doing his show. And then I, uh, I after, after all kinds of going crazy and, and writing him... Uh, um, um, uh, messages by uh, by messenger, right? Uh, I came up with the uh, answer. Uh, he told me he wasn't going to do a show last night because his wife was going to be in the hospital doing some some stuff that she had to do. Uh, and uh, so anyway, that that was uh, that. Uh, so that last night I had that little mess that I I introduced the show. It's going to be on right after me. Uh, I, I was an absolute moron about it. And uh, so I'm uh, so sorry. So sorry. My bad. <coughs> anyway, I have, I, I don't think, it's not a cold. But I have allergies in the worst way today. And I don't know what it's from, to be very honest with you. Uh, I, I, I can't, uh, uh, you know, I guess uh, there are, uh, at this time of year, still, um, uh, allergies in the air, uh, pollen in the air, uh, and although the pollen rate is low, you can be subject to certain pollens that get to you that are your your specialty. Okay. So, anyway, the Skype lines are open. By the way, if anybody uh, feels like calling, uh, I would certainly appreciate it. Uh, it's a fill-free night tonight, which uh, means that a lot of you can get a word in edgewise. So. Uh, uh, give us a, a call. If you don't know how to call us, we use a thing called Skype. And if you go over to our website, which is gabnet.net, over on the right-hand side of the page, it'll tell you everything you want to know about, about Skype and how you can call this program using Skype. There's even a button you can click on that if you've got Skype up and running, we'll dial this show for you. So uh, all everything you need to know is over there at gabnet.net. And this is where I sit, waiting to see if anybody is going to call. Uh, and if they don't, you know, I keep waiting for the night they don't, and I can just sign off early and uh, and uh, go watch some TV, right? Because I have all my shows banked up to watch. So 
Anyway, oh well, here comes Jeff Stein. Jeff can always be counted on. Jeff is a is a is a good guy. Hi there, Jeff. How you doing, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, did you hear Ronnie? Yeah, yeah. I just unfortunately uh, most of the end of it. Yeah, uh, it was. I mean, it's a hard thing. Just think about. It. It's a hard thing to think about, but she's handling. I think she's handling it much better than I would. You know. Uh, and uh, so uh, we'll, we'll see what. Oh wow, people are calling like crazy! All of a sudden, they're all calling like Bing, 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 Bang, 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 Bang. There's uh, there's Scott. There's there's uh, Rob Alfano. He's not all in the dark tonight. Uh, everybody's in the dark. Ronnie was in the dark. Uh, Charlene, how are you? Wow. Oh good. How are you? Good. <laughs> Uh, you, I, I noticed you were listening to the interview, Tom. Uh, yeah. w what are your thoughts? Oh, well, I'll tell you, it's, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, I, I can't imagine what it would be like to, to know that, uh, that the end is within a couple of years. Well, you, I mean, you know, it might happen to any, any of us. It might happen to that way, you know? Yeah. Uh, my father always said to me when I was growing up, he says, I just want to be hit by a Mack truck. There was always that proverbial. Every time I see a Mack truck truck go by, I think of my father. And my father did die in like a week. So he got his wish. But uh, a lot of us uh, in our lifetime are going to have to face that kind of situation, although it it creeps up on us. You know, you've got uh, we found a little cancer, but we took care of it. But then it comes back some more and, you know. Things like that. What she got, I mean, she got the worst cancer you can get, which, which was pancreatic. And they did this thing called the Whipple procedure on her. And uh, it, 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 they only do it on about 10% of pancreatic cancer patients because most don't, uh, are not candidates for it. And uh, they, got, they got rid of the pancreatic cancer. Ta-da, goodbye, see you later. But, you know, once you've gotten cancer, Chances you're going to get cancer somewhere else are very good, and that's exactly yeah. It what, metastasizes. Well, right? this my was, father, th this wasn't, my father had cancer. This wasn't necessarily a metastasizing. This is just it. You become more prone to it, and uh, they don't know if it metastasized or it spread from the pancreas. But for whatever reason, she now has it, and it's inoperable. Um, which I don't want to believe. Okay, I I told her. Listen, get a second opinion, come to New York, you can stay with us, you know. Uh, and she says, you know, I have the best doctors in the world here. These guys are world-class doctors. And uh, she said, uh, uh, I, I don't want to go getting tons of other opinions from people and just find the same answer and waste my time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, it's her call. Uh, but if I were her, I would be doing a second opinion somewhere, you know, mm -hmm. to see if there's some kind of... You know, here, in, I can't believe that in Portland, Oregon, there are better doctors than you're going to be able to find here in New York on the same subject matter. You're right, right Alex. There's good Sloan Kettering. Right? I mean, Sloan Kettering yeah, Sloan. is, you know. That's what I was thinking, yeah. You know, but. Uh, uh, but you know what? My dad lived in New York and didn't want to go from Long Island into New York City. Yep. Just, yep. I don't want to be bothered. So he. Well, you know, well, I mean, whatever, uh, 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 you know, my my wife said to me when we were discussing this subject, she said, if, if the same thing happened to me, that's happening to Ronnie. I wouldn't even go through the chemo. I just say it's time to go. Goodbye. That's what I think I would do, too. You know, I you swore know. my father died of lung cancer. Um, it was in like 1983. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't believe he was young. He was only 55. Yeah. But I swore when I watched him go through the chemo then that I would never let them do that to me. But I don't th I don't know if the chemo is the same. Back then it was worse, I think. They had him on platinum or something. And Well, you know. I mean, uh, they're going to put her on very light, um, a very light chemo schedule, but once every two weeks, you know, it probably won't have a great effect on her, but we'll just keep the cancer from coming I have, back. I have friends that are cancer survivors. And this amazing guy that was my manager in a restaurant, yeah. he, he would go for chemo and then go to work in the restaurant and, and go to the gym and work out and everything. Chemo is a lot different than it was, I think, back in 83 when my father had it. It's, it's not as debilitating. 
That's and they part have of patches, it. Yeah. Patches so, for the nausea and all that, yeah. right? What were you saying? That, that's that's part of it, but some of it is the whatever kind of cancer you have, the kind of chemo that they treat you with, and then everybody's body deals with the 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 effects of the drugs differently. So you're right, they probably have got better drugs, but it's depending on the cancer you have is the kind of treatment and can uh, and drug they need to use and then you know everybody's body handles it differently 200 so. 200, 200, 200, like, 200 right? uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, tom has his finger up but let me oh. let me uh, just say something first and that is that you know 200 years down the line we'll look back at chemo and go boy that was a was a uh, you know a sledgehammer to use on the disease you know we and, and we will come to a better understanding of the disease and how to handle it uh, and, and you know, and so let's say we cure cancer, all right, uh, which is a very broad term because there are a lot of cancers. But let's say we cure, we know how to stop cancer of any sort, dead in its tracks. Then there's going to be something else that's going to come along and start <laughs> getting us, you know. You're right, the, you're right. Jim. Yeah, because, I mean. Something's got to get you. You're not going <laughs> to live forever, and, mm -hmm. and, and something's going to get you. It's like I... You know, I'm a very depressing person. I'm the kind that gets up in the morning and says, well, what is it that's going to get me? You know, what, you know, oh, I have a cold. Maybe it'll turn into pneumonia. Maybe I'll die. Well, you know, then I look uh, at a friend of mine like, uh, like uh, um, uh, uh, my friend out at the Moonlight Bunny Ranch, uh, Dan Dennis Hoff, and... Uh, Dennis, uh, just he, I think he he uh, had a couple of hours of sex with a hooker, and the next morning he was dead. You know, they found him in bed, stiff as a board. So you know, I mean, what what he he's probably lucky. What a way to go, Alex. Yeah, what a way to go. <laughs> you know, and and by the way, in the same suite that Lamar Odom overdosed in. Oh, God. So, oh. You know, yes, Tom had his hand up and then Jeff. Yeah, actually, just I was going to say something else. But before that, I just just to, just to, to comment on your statement about uh, chemotherapy. Uh, remember, there was a time early in the AIDS epidemic when the, all they had was AZT. Yep. And and now uh, we have the protease inhibitors, and mm -hmm. so that's a it's a bit of you know really big revolutionary change. In, in There's that actually disease. I've seen a vaccine or something that uh, it's on TV now that you can if you're not if HIV positive, it can prevent you like uh, from being HIV positive or something. So they're making a lot well, of strides. Well, the point, the point is yeah. where, where, where AIDS was concerned, uh, in the very beginning, they were trying anything. They were desperate. You know, yeah. they were trying anything to stop this horrible scourge from, you know, we don't, we don't hear that. Do you, uh, you're gay, you probably hang out in the gay community to a certain extent, Tom. I don't think you're a professional not gay. Really. You're not, uh, you've no. never, you've never, no. I've never no. known you to be a professional <laughs> gay guy. You know, I, I, I mean, I know a lot of gay people, obviously, here in the Bay Area. Yeah, I mean, but, and, and unfortunately, new people that, that died of AIDS. But no, uh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are but, people still dying of AIDS at the well, rate that they years once ago. did? Huh? I mean, this, I'm talking about the 80s. Yeah, but I mean, now, are they, gotta, are they, is that a death be. sentence anymore? No, not anymore. Okay. And, 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 and what Charlene was talking about was PrEP. Uh, which is actually, if you use it, you can actually, it actually, it's, it actually is a, like acts as a vaccine. But I, I was just going to, just to, my original point I was going to say was, was talking about Ronnie and, and being in, in Oregon. Uh, she's actually in the original death with dignity state. Yeah. So she's in that position where, wow. and California just modeled its law uh, past, just last year. Do because it. we had a, a resident that actually went up, up to Oregon to, you know, to to take her own life because because it wasn't legal here in California. They actually passed a law uh, based on based on on her experience. Yeah. So yeah. So it's 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 something that's that's. I agree. I I think people should be able to uh, take their own lives yeah. if 
they're you know de- if they're they're dealing with a lot of pain and it doesn't look like treatment's going to do any good. Well, I'd like death with dignity, but I'm married and it's impossible. So. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jeff, you had your hand up. Yeah, uh, my, one of my good friends uh, died of, of cancer same, the same time that, that Ronnie has. And uh, he, he wouldn't tell anybody that he had cancer. And he was, he was on a, a three-month uh, death plan, so to speak. Yeah. And he just, finally his wife called me up. Yeah. And said, my dopey husband is dying like next month. Would you come over and see him? And I wow. said, well, I keep calling him. He doesn't answer the phone. Wow. Excuse me if I blow my nose every now and then, but these allergies are killing me. Uh, 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 yes, Tom. I mean, uh, 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 oh, boy, I'm so out of it. Tony. 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 Yeah, you know what I was going to say? I feel bad for you, Jeff, but I can understand Paulie maybe why he wouldn't want to say anything. Maybe. He wanted to keep it private. Maybe if people find out something about somebody, then they may be like, they maybe you want to get treated differently. You know, could that be it? Well, I think there's a there's a there's a, a certain thing that somebody might come to the decision of, and that is, do I want to spend the last few months I have left uh, well, talking crying. talking about this and having yeah, people, that's a good point. Like, I don't I, I would say anything. when I walk into a room, have everybody have a sad look on their face. You yeah. know. Or do I just want to do this and one day be dead? I'll tell you something that I found. You know, I mean, I find as I get older, I, I come in contact more with and more with death, which for somebody who's afraid of dying is a horrible, horrible thing. But now I just had uh, Dennis Hoff die uh, of, of a heart attack, or it must have been a heart attack or something like that. I, I do know he, had a, he was a major diabetic, and had, I think, a few other health problems. Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, supposedly he went to the Mayo Clinic recently, got a complete workup, which you can get there, and they said, you're in pretty good shape. You know, they, there are no major things to worry about. Although if you looked at him, he was overweight, you know, a lot of things like that. But um, I think the point I'm trying to make here is you just, you know, you don't know when these things are going to happen. And I had a friend of mine, Steve, who was like my best friend, uh, uh, who died of lung cancer. And I was with him during the whole process. You know, he'd have one operation, then he'd have another operation. And, uh, you know, he didn't look like a guy who was dying. To begin with, he had always been overweight, and he didn't lose that much weight, you know. And so we all figured, you know, oh, he's got another year or so at least before this thing gets him, and they'll keep operating on him, and they'll keep doing the radiation stuff. And, you know, all of a sudden I get a call. Uh, Steve's dead. He went to the hospital, and so we rushed up there, and uh, there he was lying in the bed. I'll never forget it with his mouth wide open. Uh, 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 Dead. Uh, and I had seen him the night before, and he just wanted to get out of the hospital. He had gone into the hospital. He wanted to get out of there because he felt they were going to kill him in there and that he just didn't want to stay in the hospital. And he had a lot of pep and energy. Of course, I had to, like, dissuade him of the idea of leaving the hospital. But I, I was so amazed by the fact that he was dead. You know, I figured, ah, this is just another incident. He's got a couple of more, at least a couple of more months. But no, he died. And he didn't die looking like somebody who was going to die. H- has anybody had that experience? Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> I just remember when my father died, um, you know, I, I thought that um, I always remember it was March. And, like, I was thinking that, you know, the better weather yeah. would be coming and, you know, yeah. maybe I'd get, like, a wheelchair and roll him around somewhere, or, you know. Yeah. And then he never made it through, like, the winter, you know, the he just, you know, that was it. You never yeah. know. I mean, it's just you never know. Yeah. When you're going to go, you're going to go. They yes, Tom. That. Yeah, when my housemate died back in 2011, that was a pretty much a shock. 
Um, he said he he said he was feeling dehydrated and and tired. And um, I had gone off to work, and then I got a call from another housemate that he had just collapsed on the bed and he was dead. What did he die from? The 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 autopsy was pneumonia. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. How old was he? <sighs> he was sixty-two. Jeez. Oh, well, yeah. you know, um, um, how but he was old? overweight, very, very Tom, overweight. Tom, how how old, really how old was Dennis Hoff? Because you read all the obituaries. 70, he was seventy-two. He was I think. Seventy-two. 72. Right? Yeah, seventy-two. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, um, he he didn't make it to the average age. You know, I mean, I'm over that now. You know, yeah. I'm living on borrowed time. Oh, you know, so I'm helping to raise the t statistic a little bit. <laughs> you don't have diabetes or anything, though, right? Like, no, that's why healthy. I keep wondering what's going to, what is it that's going to get me? You know, uh -huh. uh, because uh, right now I don't have any major health concerns. I mean, I could suddenly come down with maybe a prostate cancer, but that's easily taken care of. You know, yeah, like the way Phil had that. Uh, know. Because you know, as you get older, your 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 PSA rises, and every by the way, most men do get uh, um, uh, what do you call it? prostate cancer, but it's not deadly. It's so slow growing that it will something else will kill you first. But uh, you know, I mean, my heart seems to be okay. You know, I, I go in, I get an EKG every year. A doctor is my is a cardiologist. He says, he gives me a echocardiogram where he it's a you know sonogram kind of thing, and he looks to see. And I have a mild stenosis, but it's so small that he says if it keeps growing at the rate it's been growing, you'll be dead in about fifty years. You know, <laughs> so I mean, I I I. Uh, there's really not that much wrong with me, except I've got, I think this hay fever is going to kill me. I really <laughs> believe. Too, it's bothering me. Mine's huh? been acting up this week, oh, too. I've been sniffling all day. I've been blowing my nose. Yeah, you see what I'm talking about? Yeah, I got in at work. The guy said, what's the matter with you? He said, I got allergies or something. He doesn't understand. You know, if I'm going to get these kind of allergies, I want to live in the country. Okay? I do. You know, Alex, you know? went to Vermont, it looks so nice and peaceful. Yeah. Tiny. Oh, Isn't I, it the leaves now, like the, the dead leaves or something cause it, like the, the dust? I don't know. I don't know. But today my... You live in the heart of a city and there's all kinds of emissions and all kinds of irritants in the air. It could be anything. It may not be traditional allergies, just city crap that you're breathing in every day. It could be. I went out today because I... Uh, I, I got my, I didn't do, go to the gym, but I got my exercise by going downtown and uh, the subway not stopping at 23rd Street and then having to walk from 14th Street to 13th Street. Wow. And uh, I put in I put in a lot of time on my watch. I got about, uh, I burned off about uh, 400 calories doing that. And then I went to Italy, of course, and bought pasta. So, you know, I mean, that was our little, our little treat. Hello, Kevin. You know, Kevin. Alex, Italy is still going, even though it's Mario Batali. They haven't. Well, that wasn't just Mario Batali. So it was other quite guys, a few too. Other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, the uh, uh, Bastiani, Bastianich, rather. Uh, oh, that lady. Uh, Lydia I and, her, and her son, mm -hmm. uh, who's on Ma MasterChef or whatever. But I'll have to watch now and. I noticed that no one wants to me mention Mario Batali anymore yeah, because of what yeah, happened, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I think he still owns it, though. I just think he's not his face. They took all his sauces off the shelves there. And, and I liked <laughs> yeah. his sauces. That was the problem, you know? I, I don't care yeah, if he's a terrible, orange clogs are not I didn't like him because yeah. I didn't like him before all this came out because he wears those fucking Crocs. You know? I know. I always kind of not, didn't like him for some reason. Yeah, but but his his he was very overweight. His sauces he like are pretty good. Burn. Anyway, hello, Kevin. How are you? Hi, Alex. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. I uh, just uh, was listening to you guys talking earlier about all your about Ronnie and stuff. I guess you had Ronnie on earlier. I missed it. I yeah. guess. Yeah, but you can watch it on replay. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm just bummed about that. That sucks. Well. You know, I I was very bummed about it. You know, well, you know, it's kind of it, it, my friend 
you know that I, my friend up in uh, Oregon also has is fighting the ALS thing. My yeah. best friend, and he just got admitted into the uh, hospital today, probably a couple hours ago, and he's fighting pneumonia right now. So it's not looking good for him either. And you guys were talking about the, you know, the, uh, the. Uh, uh, I don't know what you call it—the assisted suicide thing and all that. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, they, they call it. You know, death. They, they, she, they, she doesn't like they, that term though. She hates that term. She likes suicide. Yeah. What do they call it? Well, it's called. Call it? It's Asia. called technical term. They it's call Asia. it death yeah, with dignity. Whatever. Yeah. I don't even like that term because that seems like you're going to the the vet. <laughs> well, that's like you know? saying handy capable. You know. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, but they, you know, when when they were treating him, that was, was was interesting. When I went up there to see him last month. They invited me into the um, into the his neuro, neuro, neurology uh, appointment, mm. and I got to see a lot of that stuff. And they hold nothing back when you go into these things. But th- that wasn't part of the conversation. But when I talked to his wife and stuff, and, and, and that, all that stuff is brought right up to the front, you know, when they're going into their their treatments and their their psychological preparation, because he was given two to five to live. This yeah. guy's 54 years old and was just right. diagnosed last December. Yeah. And and all that stuff is brought right up front. Said, Ooh. okay, here's what your options are. Here's what could happen. And he's at the point where he can't, you know, he's eating through a tube and the whole bit. And this is only in the last less than a year that he can't even speak anymore. Where, where does he it's, live? It's crazy. Is... And, and this guy is, is a kid at 54 years old as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Yeah, where does he live? He lives up in... Uh, in Oregon, up well, by well, you know, actually yeah. by Lake Oswego. Well, well, he can take the pill there, you know. Yeah, he can do all that. He just got to crush it up and put it into his IV. No, well, either that or oh, he what he can't swallow. Uh, no, he, uh, well. he can't swallow it all anymore. He hasn't. Last time I went up there last year on my uh, sixty-one, you know, my sixtieth birthday uh, uh, mystery trip that my wife took me on. That's when he surprised me, and we saw him, you know, for his first time in a couple yeah. of years, I guess. Well saw him i'd talked to him over the years but uh he we we had had some ribs when i was up there i smoked some ribs for him and that was the last meal we had because in december of that year he he choked on food and then that's when they stopped him from eating food wow Wow. and now he just hey folks this is a very i feel guilty eating yeah i'm sure this is a very uplifting show for our audience yeah i know but but the fact of the matter is folks you know it was starting to go up and i came in and brought it down I, I used to do obituaries every morning on the radio show. Tom knows about this. I used to do the obituaries. And one of the things I used to say is, I do this every morning because we're all going to die. You know? yeah. and, and, and then, of course, I could say it jokingly because I was in my 40s. Uh, but now uh, it has a lot more meaning. And the thing is that as somebody, you know, I told Ronnie, God, we haven't been married for, when did we get divorced? 78, I think, was when the divorce came through. She said 71, didn't she? 71? She did. No, 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 no. We broke up in 71. Oh, I think okay. the divorce oh. didn't happen until maybe... No, excuse me, you're right. You're right. It happened about 75 or 76. And um, she... Um, but we, you know, we stopped being married then. We didn't talk to each other for years. And then one day I came back from Europe and I gave her a call and I, I'd come to a conclusion about something that I had been a real asshole during the marriage. I mean, nothing I could prevent because it had to do with my own insecurities, but I felt she was owed an apology. So I called her up and I said, I want to have lunch with you. And she said, what about, I said, I just want to talk to you. And we had lunch and I apologized. I said, you know, I wasn't a very good husband. I cheated on you a lot. Uh, it was a it was a problem with me, not a problem with you, and uh, you know I consider you a really great person and a person who was very important to me. And I I just want I don't feel good about the fact that I hurt you, and if an apology will help, I I hope so. You know, and she kind of accepted my apology, and since then we've been friends. You know, and what I said to her the other day, and I said it on this thing tonight was that, you know, we were married once. And in a way, that makes you family, no matter what. Yeah, Even if there was a exactly. divorce and we, you know, but we, we did start talking to each other again, and you're family, you know. And, and 
I, I uh, you know, it, it's a very hard, I hate to be selfish about it, but it's a, how dare she even come get sick like this because uh, look at what, it's what my mother used to say. I phoned my mother once. I said, Mom, I have sad news. She said, what? I got fired. She says, how can you do this to me? <laughs> you know, <laughs> but now I maybe am beginning to understand that, you know, uh, to, uh, to say to Ronnie, how can you do this to me? You know, come on, shape up. You know, it's, it's very strange conflicting feelings that you have you know yeah, yes uh first charlene then uh, then tony okay oh i just wanted to say alex you know like kevin said last night i heard you uh talking about it you know before i saw the show tonight mm -hmm. and um you know i don't know what to say either but uh i just thought that the way she's handling it is the way i would too like she's laughing and she's humorous you know well i yeah. mean uh, she's handling it better than i ever would you know. Me too. Yeah, you, you you wouldn't handle it better, would you? No, I'd be I'd be a real miserable, just scared, like you know, just a, a mess. I would you go. You know what? I, you know what I would. Though? You know what I would do? I would go down to Costco, get me one of those scooters, and then start <laughs> mowing people down. <laughs> you know what? Oh, you, you, if you've ever been close to it or had that kind of a situation, you never know that. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm, Jeff, I'm maybe, a pessimist. Maybe you've I... been close to that situation. You know, you, you think about what you would do, but you don't necessarily do that when you get in that situation. Yeah, you know, you're I, absolutely. I, I, I was right, only Kevin. in that situation for a small amount of time, very small amount of time, but I never thought about doing that kind of weird shit. You know something? What's strange? You know? And then I get to you, Tony. <laughs> Uh, okay. uh, what, what's strange about it, you're absolutely right, Kevin. Uh, I always thought of myself as a screaming coward, okay? You know, that if there was anything that I had to do that took some presence of mind and bravery, uh, I, would, uh, I would just collapse, all right? So we had an earthquake, the Loma Prieta quake, took place in my neighborhood. Buildings are falling everywhere. My girlfriend 29, is... Huh? 29 years ago today. Is it Really? At wow. ten seventeen this morning. Funny, I should. No, no, I, funny, I uh, should bring it up. You know. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was five seventeen. Four p.m. So how many years yep, ago was right. that now? Five oh four. It's thirty years ago. Twenty nine years. ago. Twenty nine years ago. Okay. Yeah, they usually have the drill at ten seventeen on ten seventeen. Yeah. That's right. Oh, okay. <laughs> now I'll never forget it. Uh, so anyway, so so. Uh, 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 I, we we're in my apartment. We I had been up the hill and then we came back down. The whole marinas in rubble and my girlfriend who i always thought would be the brave one in a situation like this is going let's get out of here let's get out of here come on let's get out of here so i said okay come on let's go to the and i'm calm i'm just you know there are fires everywhere buildings have fallen down and i'm just like easy peasy come on we get in the car we go a block i notice that people are are assembled because the building has fallen down, and they're getting people out of the building. So I decide, uh, wait a minute, let me just stop the car for a few minutes here. I want to go see if I can help. And she's going, no, no, let's get over the bridge. Let's go to Marin. Let's go see your business manager. Let's get out of here. She's the one who's like going panicky, and I'm going, I want to help those people over there. And, and I never thought that in that situation I would react that way. Yeah. You know, finally, because I, she yelled and screamed enough, I stopped helping people, and I got in the car, and we went across the bridge. And she says, well, do you think it won't have another quake while we're going across the bridge? And she was always the one who was brave. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she was the rock of Gibraltar in situations. And I was the, the excuse, ex, pardon the expression, pussy. Yes, Tom. Okay. Are you talking about the bridge oh, yeah. reminded me my ex? used to be really paranoid about going uh, on BART underneath the bay because she says, oh, the earthquake's going to happen and we're all going to drown in, in, in the tube. And so what happens is the BART was just perfectly fine and the Bay Bridge fell down. <laughs> exactly. Yes, Tom. Uh, Tony, he, uh, he's been I'm, having his hand. My in. mom is, I have to walk the dog and my mother, I don't to check on my mother because she just paid me with Alexa. Well, uh -oh. with I'm sorry. Alexa, you can give me Paige with Alexa. No. You know, she That's... can't dial, so she could say, "Call Anthony Magno," and then hear uh -huh. a call. So I hear her voice in the kitchen. I have one in my kitchen. 
Well, the device, the device, the device is not. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Before you go, the the device is not called. She's where are you, mom? In my room. It's ridiculous. Are you listening to me, Tony? Tony, listen. Listen to me, Tony. Listen to me. It's not called Alexa. It's called Echo. I know. She. You had to, Alex, I had to train her to do this. It was ridiculous. Come on. You know what I'm going to do? You're going to laugh at this. Oh, my God. She has a thing in her room I have to put on at night that makes a water sound. She can't sleep with, like, a waterfall. It's a shh. I mean, come well, on some, already, some, people, some people need that. I know. She's a one twist. I love her, but I can't take it sometimes. Okay, well, you can leave. John Rockwell is shown. Uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow, Alex. Okay. Good night. Bye, Tony. Bye, Tony. Bye, Tony. Yeah. Bye, Tony. Well, I came in because it looked like you needed a full house, but now we're losing. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. We did have a full house, didn't we, with that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was your eighth person. Well, with you, it was a full house. Well, uh, wait a minute. Well, it was no, for. It no, no, it wasn't. We, need, we would need one more for a full house. Now we need two yeah. more. Now we need at least one more person. Yeah. yeah but, uh, oh, well. No, but, good. but anyway, uh, so uh, uh, let me see here. Oh, yeah, I was going to go to Tony. And then I, I went to Tony and he said, I have to go walk the dog and walk. <laughs> or one of these days he's going to get really mixed up and walk his mother. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, Rob. You know where I differ from you with this whole thing about fear of dying? I'm not afraid to die. I'm afraid how I'm going to die. Uh, the worst possible. I mean, I don't give a rat's ass if I go to bed tonight and never wake up. I truly do not care. But what what you, what Ronnie is going through is my worst nightmare. Having to live, having to go to bed every night thinking about when is it going to start? How bad is it going to be? What's going to happen to me is far worse than the idea of death to me. Far worse. Well, if you if you're worried if if you want to worry about death, the one you the one you, that got to me was this guy Kosoji Kosoji uh, <laughs> the uh, the uh, Saudi uh, uh, who was obviously uh, it, murdered. I'm for I'm sure. Supposedly, according to the Turkish authorities, uh, he was chopped up with a bone saw by mm -hmm. a forensic expert. Uh, I wonder what the part of do no harm in medicine uh, came to <laughs> mind there. And supposedly, they didn't kill him first when they started cutting him apart. Right. Cut off his fingers. Did they? Well, that's one, one of the stories said they started, started with his fingers. Yeah. So whenever it sounds you, like torture. It sounds you like your basic torture, torture yeah. thing. It sounds to me like uh, like they were torturing him. Yes, Tom. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the, the, the thing you're saying was that they, they specifically cut him off because that was he used to type, which oh, reminds me. Um, have you ever been to the La Pena Cultural Center here in, in Berkeley? No. Um, well, there's a there's a, uh, a cultural center that was started by uh, Chilean uh, refugees mm -hmm. when uh, uh Allende was overthrown mm -hmm. and escaped from uh, Pinochet. They right. came up to Berkeley, and they set up this cultural center and restaurant. Right. But there's this mural over the top. It's a it's a 3D mural re, uh, across the top of the building, mm -hmm. and it has a um, among the pictures. It has a hand playing a guitar, disembodied hands playing guitar, uh -huh. and the reason for that is uh, there was a very, I know what you're talking folk about. Singer, folk singer down Victor, in... Victor, Victor Hara. Victor mm -hmm. Hara, uh, yes. Who, they cut his hands off. Or they cut his hands off and said, now you can't play your guitar. And so what he did is he, he led the, uh, the whole crowd in song. I guess it was... They, they had them all in a stadium. They'd round right. them up and had them all in a stadium. And he literally, without his hands led them in song conducting them with these stumps of hands uh, yeah it's a it's a well, great story years ago i thought why doesn't somebody make a movie of that story you know uh, because yeah. what a dramatic they thought of that one. that's what i what thought what actor wants to get their hands <laughs> cut off <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah i'll do it <laughs> method acting yeah right yeah yeah but uh uh, yeah, today, of course, our, our boy, uh, whose name has not been mentioned tonight, so so why should I mention his name? Uh, Trump. 
Oh, there we go. Well, he said it. Well, you know, the I'll, only thing I'll is, the only thing is, Phil isn't here, so it doesn't really think. matter. It doesn't start a tsunami. Uh, anyway, <laughs> no. uh, he today, as part of his defense of the Saudis, said, you know, once again, as he did with uh, uh, the Chief Justice, the the Justice of the Supreme Court, uh, uh, um, Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh. Uh, he said, Chief you Justice, know, that would be John uh, Roberts. Uh, 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 yeah, true. Uh, well, he's, he's, you know, guilt, he's innocent. He's, he, we say innocent until proven guilty, but he's guilty before proven innocent. That isn't the way things are here in America. He fails to remember that back here in New York, there was a thing called the Central Park Five. Oh, yes. And these right. were people that were accused of raping a woman. And he led the charge by placing an ad in the New York Times before there was ever a trial to prove their innocence, saying, let's execute these guys. Let's, let's kill Let's bring these in guys. the death penalty. Bring, bring in the death penalty for these guys. I remember Now, that. this is the guy who today is saying innocent until proven guilty. Uh, apparently, he didn't used to believe that. Alex, they were later on found innocent, too, right? Yes. Yeah, or at least they were finally, yeah, the, the evidence was still, he's still faulty and they were released. Yeah. He still wanted them executed. Yeah. <laughs> Even that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a e evil man. But anyway. Oh, he's uh, also, uh, that whole thing with that woman Pocahontas again, with the <laughs> DNA. Elizabeth Warren, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, then he's uh, calling, uh, I, going back and I, forth I, with Stormy Daniels. Calling her horse face and everything. Well, now the Navajo Nation wants Elizabeth Warren to stop. And uh, there was no, the no, wrong, of, of wrong. Not, not, to stop not, as well not, the, not the Navajo Nation, the uh, the Cherokees. Cherokee. Right. Cherokee, I'm sorry, yeah. Everyone's saying she should never have done it. I don't think she, she should. Just... I don't think she should have done it either. I, I think that it's. Certainly uh, not now. Yeah. This is the wrong time. Right, mm -hmm. right. With mm -hmm. all the things going on. Especially if it was. if. She was, you know, whatever part she has. It's, uh, yeah, let me ask it's you, not important now. Let me, Wait until after let me, the let me ask you, until me, you're, yeah, you know. Let me ask you guys a question, though, here. Uh, uh, I heard a discussion today saying that with the Kavanaugh hearings, maybe the Democrats and maybe the left wing went too far, you know, with the rioting in the halls and so on and so forth, because what it did is it, it maybe turned some of the populace against the Democrats. And that that was a time for us to kind of back off and kind of not make a big deal out of something. And all I could think of was, how do you do that? You know, how, do you, are you so wedded to winning elections that you don't you want to give up your, your moral stance? Uh, yes, Tom. Yeah, I think that's what the Republicans want us to believe. I mean, they they're, they they want to scare people off from 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 being motivated I, and that's and, and and that's the one thing about the Kavanaugh thing we are motivated the Republicans yeah. are not they're trying to they're trying to shove this narrative off that their base is is, is finally energized but they got what they wanted yeah. and 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 so they don't they don't have any real motivation to vote we're the ones that are motivated to vote because uh, because yeah. we see what what what's what's happening as long as 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 the Republicans are are in control of the Senate and and uh, we'll get more Kavanaugh's. Okay, Brian, you're on. Yeah, I just was made aware this morning, and I was uh, peering through the Washington Journal that there was this congresswoman in North Dakota or South Dakota. I think it's North Dakota. Her name is I think her last Heidi name Camp. is Heidel Camp or something. Hi, 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 yeah. hi, Heidi. Heidi. Uh, Heidi. Heidi. Heidi High Camp. Heidi, Heidi High yeah. Camp. Whatever. But nevertheless, the uh, there were some uh, uh, sexual assault victims who were rather unpleased with her having published their names, and uh, or her campaign and her campaign staff had published their names and uh, uh, made their uh, ordeals uh, public, and they're uh, wanting uh, to seek charges and wanting to sue for her and her campaign staffers for having done that. Yeah. I didn't hear and about she that. is a Democrat, so yeah. yeah, she uh she actually actually voted against Kavanaugh because yeah. she because she's way behind the polls. Unfortunately, she's the most vulnerable uh, 
a Democrat in the Senate. So she had really had nothing to lose. She's a senator. Okay. Yeah, she is a senator. And she actually voted against against Kavanaugh. But nevertheless, they're pissed off. And I wonder how much the right wing is uh, fueling and funding their campaign well, to you know, dethrone her. Yeah, but my but, my here's my here's a, here, a black mark still a black mark. Here, here's what I ask you, uh, and, and it's a moral question to be asked, and that is that the Republicans have taken to saying that the Democrats are an angry mob. <clears throat> Now, believe me, I know Democrats, and if there were ever a bunch of wimps, it's the Democrats, okay? Uh, the angry mob is, uh, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, but they're trying to portray us as an angry mob. So if we suddenly hold protests, uh, are we fueling uh, their argument that we're an angry mob? I mean, uh, uh, you know, I mean, if I were black, should I stop eating watermelon? You know, I mean, uh, because somebody might think that I'm stereotyping blacks. You know, uh, you get what I'm saying here? I mean, do do you give up that which you believe because you're so wedded to the fact that, well, it might, might make the people get mad at us? That kind of turns you into an Uncle Tom of sorts, or at least a political Uncle Tom. Yeah, but you could turn that argument around and say that's exactly what Donald Trump is doing, right? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say that. I mean, lock her up and chanting, ch chanting, lock her up at at these at these campaign rallies. That's what I call an angry mob. I mean, that's ins <laughs> well, well, that's you know, I mean, look, let, let's be honest about it. Uh, Donald Trump says everything about everybody else that he really thinks about himself <laughs> okay you know uh oh he's very good at deflecting well he deflects but more than that i mean uh, deflector in chief dic dick that's yeah. exactly what he is <laughs> there you go yeah uh but but you, you get what i'm saying here you know he's he he uh, so i get what you're saying alex and i say until we uh collectively in spite of uh phil's objectives at uh, little pudgy balls uh, objective and people like him uh collectively embrace the tactics of antifa and turn this into an uprising and you know yeah. we start doing going all french revolution uh -huh. marie Antoinette, we'll put your fucking head in a fucking guillotine uh then we deserve to be called wimps yeah yeah well, I mean, the question is, how much do we wimp out in order to, say, win an election? Uh, or is it going to win us an election? We'll you know, see. I honestly believe if, they, if the Republicans believe there was an angry mob out there ready to kill them, I think they would probably acquiesce. Oh, I'm sure <laughs> you they know? would. You're sure. heading to guillotine. Go, and we're talking corporate Democrats, too. They, they'd acquiesce us faster than the uh, Republicans would. So, like I said, until we go, we start going, okay, where we Antoinette on their fucking ass, then, you know, we not only deserve to be called wimps, then, well, you know. Yeah. But we're, we'll also see what happens November 7th. Yeah. Six. Morning of November 7th. What do you guys Eight. think is going to happen Eight. November 7th? <laughs> Eight? What day is it? The November 8th, 6th. I think, yeah. No, the 6th. The 6th. Oh, that's what I'm saying. November 7th, oh, when the results are tally. Yeah. Real, oh, the day after the election. What, right. do, you, what, yeah. do, you think, what do you think we're going to find out on November 7th? Mm. Well, whether we could where we, we take it over a house or not. I'm not asking that. I'm asking what do you think is going to happen? Do you think? Who knows? Do you, do you, th do you think the Democrats? Who's going to even predict after the it's last? Hard to, one? Yeah, exactly. You, you hate to go on a limb because, you know, no, there is that factor of those now. who will not say they're going to support the Republicans for fear of being chastised for it. Yeah. You can't predict one way or the other, especially the other way that Democrats will win. Because of the old saying that you never dance on the motherfucker's grave until you're sure that motherfucker's fully dead. Yeah, right. <laughs> like I said, we'll find Alex? out November seventh at least. By the way, the Did best. You the see best... the thing on uh, MSNBC about the white supremacists infiltrating, you know, underneath the uh, the Republican Party uh, headquarters. You know, uh, the I forgot who it was, but they're they're doing it covertly. How about the Proud Boys? 
Yeah, uh, New York. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're doing it really, uh, really sneakily. You know, they're 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 dressing nice and everything else. And, and I would argue that, that they've been doing that since the Southern strategy had been implemented. Well, yeah, but they're they're doing it a lot. <laughs> now it's been ramped up to a different. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Wait a minute. What is this? I I never heard this story. What is it exactly? Well, I, I caught pieces of it this morning before I left, and it was a, it was an MSNBC piece that they did, or it was NBC, I can't remember which. I was, I was getting ready this morning, and they were they were in, talking about the the white supremacists that were that were a lot more sophisticated nowadays than they used to be, and how they're dressing up with ties and and, and dressing nicely, and and there was a, a an actual I think senator, congressman, or whatever that. That actually got elected, and they're slowly getting into the GOP, and and you know becoming accepted. And one day they're just going to kind of pop out. Okay, <laughs> they've you already know. popped out the truck. Sounds disgusting, yeah, right? They're there. still there. Old purgings are helping it too. I, so. By the way, by the yeah. way, by the way, the best. Again, uh, I just caught pieces of it, so I, I yeah. can't you know, say a whole well, bunch tomorrow, about it. The, be, we'll the best tweet of of the week happened to be the reply from Stormy Daniels to mm. to Trump <laughs> about uh, calling our horse face or whatever. Oh yeah. In which oh. she then, at the end of hers, called him tiny. Yeah. <laughs> Mushroom. <laughs> Uh, I had a question about bestiality. <laughs> seems yeah. interested in seems interested in animals. Because <laughs> uh, he said horse. Because he said horse yeah. face. But all I'm saying is, how good do we have to be? Be in or I I don't think I think if we were just completely above board and uh, you know the problem with Democrats the in the past. Just, it, no, the problem with Democrats in the past is they've never been willing to play as dirty as the Republicans. And maybe we have to play as dirty as the Republicans. That's what Bill Maher keeps saying. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, I, I I believe in it. I think that uh, they have relied on the fact that we're wimps, that we are. Tr we try to be good. We, we, you know, we try to uh, stay on a high plane, and they can go as low as they want and kick us in the balls. Yes, uh, Jeff. Yep. I think one of the problems that that we have as Democrats today, mm -hmm. we don't have a direction. We don't have we don't have anybody no. in charge, so to speak. You know, we don't have a candidate to put up there in twenty twenty. Right. We don't have any no, what? No. We don't need it. We don't need Biden. But we don't need know, Hillary. You know, at one time we said that, and we didn't have a candidate. And all of a sudden, there was a guy by the name of. Uh, of Barack Obama who came along, uh -huh. you know, before that, work, before yeah. that, before that, we didn't know who the next Democratic candidate was going to be. And it was Bill Clinton. You know, he came out of nowhere. So uh -huh. the chances are somebody may come out of nowhere. Yeah, well, uh, this let's come together. Uh, shit isn't going to fly anymore. I don't think, for instance, Elizabeth Warren has a chance of a. No. Uh, nope. uh, I would have thought that no, three well, weeks ago, Alex, now. but not now. Huh? Huh? I would have thought that Elizabeth Warren had a chance three weeks ago. I don't think so. all this shit that's been occurring, I don't. I agree look, with you. Look, completely. look, I'm going to say something, and it's not going to sit well, especially with Renee if she's listening. Uh, yeah. We live in a television age, in a mediaized age, uh, and there needs to be something more that you bring to the table than just your thoughts and ideas. It's also a personality. Now, whether you want to Admit it or not, Trump is a very well-schooled media personality. And yes, so he, 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 he translated that into becoming president of the United States. Elizabeth Warren doesn't have that going for her. She's not uh, terribly attractive, which I know I'm, I shouldn't say that, but it counts in a televised age, you know. It, 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 we, do you disagree with me, Tom? Because you'd be the guy on this panel who really disagree with me. But I you definitely know. disagree with you. Well, one thing I I I, I, I hate to. I, th I think that's what hurt Hillary. I'm very upset that, that we're veering back into talking about the presidential race when the when the midterms haven't even occurred. We're 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 looking for a savior, and that's what I I, I that that really annoys me. I mean, let's worry about the presidential race 
after these, these midterms. But right now, we've got a lot of exciting candidates that, I mean, like, like, like Beto O'Rourke. <laughs> he's really, I mean, he's, good. If he he's loses, really good. He's really giving Ted Cruz a run for his money. He's forcing Republicans to, to put their resources into that campaign. Uh, Stacey Abrams in Georgia running for governor. I mean, I'm here reading that uh, that uh, that the, the that the early voting is 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 in Georgia is just massive. I mean, in spite of attempts attempts to suppress the vote, mm -hmm. I mean, people are just coming out in droves and voting early. So yeah. I, I think we should be talking about and and, and, and focusing on this election because we've got a lot of great candidates and we need to. Uh, really, really back them and then worry about the presidential race later. But I still, the reason I think we bring it up, though, Tom, is because uh, this is a talk show where we discuss stuff, and that is up for discussion, even though it's, you, you may think it's premature, but we really have to start thinking about it because we need a stealth candidate. We, you know, Obama was a stealth candidate. There was, uh, I thought, if I were to sit around and, and create a candidate who could win, I would invent Barack Obama. Well, he was a very reluctant candidate. I mean, he was very reluctant to, to challenge Hillary Clinton, just like candidates were, were really reluctant to, to challenge Clinton in, in 2016. Yeah. Uh, they really talked him into it. Now, and, and, and Michelle Obama... If you remember that 60 Minutes interview, she really didn't want him to run either because she was afraid he was going to get killed. Yep. yep. Yeah. By the way, uh, let, I want to talk to you, Scott, because all night he's been sitting very still there like, and looks like a Rembrandt painting. Uh, <laughs> anything to it's add to this? I mean, who would you vote uh, who, as a Democrat? Who do you see on the horizon as a burgeoning star? Any? Kamala Harris, hmm. Senator from uh, California. Mm -hmm. I think she's very good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Alex, Alex, I was just going to say she took over you know, for Barbara Boxer, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Like, do you guys think that uh, it could be a woman? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it, uh, it, it. Doctor Who's a woman now, so why not? You know. <laughs> um, and by the way, very well played. Uh, uh, I, I think that we, we got into the notion of a woman. I think Hillary was maybe not the perfect idea, uh, but I think there is a, a woman out there that certainly could do it. I don't think, it isn't a question of, uh, well, how much experience does she have? How much experience did, uh, did Barack Obama have, as an example? He was a senator for less than two years. You know, uh, but but somebody who and I sit here as somebody who watches the media, knows what the media is about. You need a person who the me is media. What's the word I'm looking for? Rob? Savvy. Uh, savvy. No. Friendly. Me media friendly. Yeah. That, that plays. High well in the Q media. rating. Looks yeah, good. Q yeah. Exactly. Q Looks fashion. good. You know, I mean, because let's face it, uh, Donald Trump appealed to uh, a, 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 no, he agreed uh, to a thuggish, oafish bunch yeah. of voters, which is a yeah. large quantity of people in this country. You know, mm -hmm. you and I, yeah. you know, uh, oh, we, yeah. I live in New York and uh, uh, Tom lives in San Francisco and John lives in New York and. Uh, you know, it, yeah, we're it, not out where all those uh, voters we, were. We, we have no in. idea what it's like out there in Omaha. You know, uh, we have no idea. All we you have know, no idea what it's like out here in Jersey. Well, there are a yeah. lot of Trump yeah. where I am. Yeah. <laughs> Although out there, you've got a real problem. We may the Democrats may was, lo may lose the Senate say, Alex, because of that. The crook. only thing we have going on where I am is the Menendez and Hugan thing. And that tonight was on the news that Hugan is not going to, he's like 4% less than Menendez, they say. And now Menendez okay. is furious because it got so nasty that they're talking about him and Colombian hookers and 
Well, you know, my, my like question is, it, do everybody remember Menendez and all the, he was actually, uh, went on trial. And mm -hmm. I can't remember what it was but they, But he was acquitted. You know? yeah, but what, yeah, but he went on trial. Well, of course, they never mentioned that in the ad. In right. The, in the attack ad. He's angry about that, right? Menendez did all these things. Well, not, not, didn't get, didn't get, uh, you know, yeah. But that's all Jersey has going on. <laughs> Do other states have, like, more exciting elections going on? Because this is a, a not such an exciting year. But maybe well, I'm hoping I, I a sit lot over of here. I, vote. See, the one thing we get in New York, because everything sloughs off from New Jersey, is we get all the ads. You mm -hmm. know, so I mm -hmm. see all the ads against Menendez by the Yugen people. And there's some really good ones, you know. Uh, uh, and and basically, they're they're portraying him as a crook. And mm -hmm. if everybody remembers, there was a trial, so some people came away with the lasting impression that on some level the guy's a crook. Out here, they have the uh, whatever those things are that you get at Staples with the they put them on the lawn and everything. There are people going around like uh, sticking like a one in front of all the pro Menendez. They'll go ahead and stick one that's like, you know, says something horrible about him, you know. Yeah. It's it's a dirty fight, this one, you know. Well, it's a good, it, all, all these, any any election in New Jersey is dirty. Are you kidding me? And you know what I've noticed? Who's like, this Menendez? Nowadays, What's they this don't even name? say who's Republican, who's Democrat. It's just Hugen Menendez, Hugen Menendez. Yeah. And like, you know, like they don't even, you know, because I, I yeah. guess everyone knows, but. It'd be nice if they would just mention the party a little. No, no. Yeah. That's not just, that's in Pennsylvania, too. I do that. I don't mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tom, okay. Tom? Yeah, I was just saying that all they have to do is is, is play that uh, yeah, <laughs> recording of, of Trump talking to who he thought was Menendez, who was some prankster. Uh, yes. <laughs> Oh, I know what you're Sorry, talking about. How I much think. likes him, and how he's happy to get you know. That's what I would do. I would make sure that gets gets a lot of airplay there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it, you know, it, we're in such a mediaized age now that the candidate. You know, I often said that in every age that we had a, a president, people running for the presidency, they had to have some quality that fit the media of the times, like when. Uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln was running for president. You had to look really good from the back of a train. Okay, <laughs> you know you had to have an imposing figure, the t the top hat, With the, big hat. Know, the stovepipe hat. You know, uh, and uh, supposedly his voice wasn't that good. Supposedly he was very high pitched. You know, <laughs> so he just had to have a commanding presence from the back of a train, and you could win an election. But then radio came in. And what kind? Who won? Who uh, was the biggest winner using FDR. radio? FDR with his very commanding voice, but you never saw him, because if you saw him, he was in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. and uh, he at times didn't look healthy. So, but radio was his medium, and he was able to promote himself and and make himself president through the use of radio. Yep, fireside chats. So then we go to the first television. Kennedy. And we have Kennedy and Nixon. Ke Kennedy and Nixon, and, and Nixon lost think Nixon the election. Lost a lot just they, they because were, of the debates. He didn't look presidential. He, he looked like the he people was sweating. Who, the people, there, sweating. Were, there was an equal amount of people listened to him on radio, was listened to him, on, watched him on television. The ones who listened to the debate on radio felt that Nixon won the debate, and the people who watched it on television felt Kennedy had won the debate. But then again, you know, he was. Um, you know, and, and Nixon fucked with people on TV too. Yes, yes. Hello to uh, Renee. How are you, Renee? Good. Guess, I was listening. Guess what? Full house. Yeah. Hey. So hey, by I the by, by the way, before before before, with, minute, before we go further, uh, I I uh, put in an invitation for you to walkie talkie me on your watch. Have you looked at your oh. watch lately to see if uh, mm. I because I, it says I invited you. You know, so I'm available for walkie talkie. Yeah. Is that Zello, Alex? Something. Uh, what? There's an app called Zello. That's no, no, no. This is this is actual walkie talkie. But anyway, I sent an invite to you. So. Okay, I'll take it. it. I'll should, see if I can find it. Should be on the watch. Yeah. So I agree with you, Alex. This, this next person has to have has to be media savvy, or at least, at the very least, be appealing. And I'm not sure 
who that person's going to be. But I also agree with Tom. We cannot be banking on some great mystical person showing up and being our our chosen one. Well, and that, yeah, you're because that you're, shit's not. Gonna we don't happen. need we don't need a messiah, you know. Yeah. Uh, but but I think the next person we should we have to realize in the, in this mediaized age that we need somebody who plays well to that media and looks oh, yeah, good in that media uh, and looking good looking good's very important you know somebody uh, who has to uh, has to energize young people to get out and vote yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh, yes uh, John well one of the things. Uh, well, there are these people in various, usually in state conference, like state senators or state congressmen or whatever, that would be very good candidates. But nobody outside of the state know who they are. Yeah. They have to start now starting to get themselves in some way national publicity and not by saying that they're 164th Indian. I mean, they have to get something <laughs> more, somehow get into, because I don't know who the woman is you talked about in California. She may be wonderful. <laughs> But if I don't find out about her until 20, 2019, you know, I'm not going to know. I mean, you know, the people that are out there, the people are like, well, like Cory Booker, he, he gets on all the time. He may be perfectly. I don't think he's the best person at all. Yeah, but people mind. know him nationally, yeah. you know. And, uh, you know, I mean, one of the reasons people are talking about Joe Biden is that, you know, Everybody knows who he is. Yeah, but everybody Bi thinks he was given a wrong deal. Biden's too, Biden's too old. Right. But, and, you know. and when we sit here and say Biden, we aren't thinking about the Biden baggage, you right. know. Uh, but right. yeah. once he started would start running, they would bring up all that baggage, and you know mm -hmm. we can go back all the way to like the hearings with uh, what's her name uh, who went after the Supreme Court Anita justice Hill. Anita, Anita Hill. Hill. Go back to that and just show yeah. him in, at the Anita Hill hearings, and you go, uh, uh I'm not voting for him. Yeah. I think they're hoping Biden runs. Yeah, uh, well, the Republicans are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, who had his hand up first, Jeff or Ray? Jeff did? Huh? Well, I had my hand up first, but Jeff, I stomped on him before. So go ahead. Okay, go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm very concerned about Trump surviving and, um, concerned. And I, I'm not. Uh, yeah. I'm, really? because I, I'm hoping that he dies. When he was saying surviving, he wasn't referring to politically. He was referring to surviving th this but orb. As the question is, is it strategically a good thing? to start arguing with him and, and fighting with him. And, and, and is there a way to kind of destroy him before he gets the chance to vote again? You He's know. Teflon. The guy is Teflon. Uh, and it seems like. And so the, the reality is maybe we're better just by keeping our mouth shut. And he has raised more him. money than in, in any income incumbent president already he's got sick amount of money behind him already typically incumbent presidents don't start raising money two years before the election but he's been raising money for a long time and he's got a big bankroll so so rob with, with that problem what do you recommend <laughs> Moving, anyway, moving, moving, yeah, exactly. A little, a little, some something in. Uh, we we need someone on the inside to to inject him while he's sleeping. Well, I know. I think I think a good idea would be move to Canada, uh, because at least pot's legal there. there now. Yes, John Rockwell has his hand up. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Then, wait, 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 hold on a second. Renee had her hand oh, up ahead. first. Hey, oh, yeah, I'm please, sorry. Renee. Go okay, ahead. so this was uh, back to Kevin. So, Kevin, is it possible that you heard this story? And, and this is the second time I've seen it, and I haven't vetted it yet, but it's still here. Armed protesters were on Portland rooftops. Excuse me. Gun, or excuse me, armed people armed with guns that were not police officers were called Patriot Prayers, were stationed themselves on top of downtown Portland rooftops with caches of guns prior to the summer protest. And the police didn't stop them. 
And the police, by the way, these demonstrations were back on August 4th, just told the city officials within the past 24 to 48 hours. Mm. We no, that had... Oh, that wasn't the right... That wasn't the same no, thing. No, the one that I was talking about was uh, the Patrick Casey, the identity Europa that's pushing their way into the GOP. Oh, I, I just sent that. the article to Alex. Okay. okay. Uh, so uh, we've yeah. had gunmen. So what do you guys think about this? So now non-police officers, non-military people are being allowed to sit on top of structures during protest and decide. Is that their house? From that are they point. sitting on their own houses? No, nope, nope. they're sitting nope. on top of public buildings. No, but oh. Portland has some weird shit going on up there during their protests. They do because I... My friend's kid goes to him. <laughs> There's some weird shit going on up there. Is this Portland, yeah. Oregon? Oregon? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. It, uh, uh, Tom. Tom had stuff. his hand up. Tom. No, you. Uh, no, Tom. Uh, Tom. John. John. John, John excuse me, John. Yes. Yeah. I'm. Oh well, no. This excuse is. Excuse me. I'm punchy tonight. Right. This is sort of a, a a side thing, but I don't know if you saw was watching uh, Rachel Maddow yesterday and this whole story about about the fact that the Gary Hart campaign was basically torpedoed by Lee Atwater back in the day. Right. He set everything up, including the monkey business uh, uh, boat, by telling by telling the guy who had the original boat, oh, you, you can't use that. We got to use the, the whole thing. And Atwater, right before he died, told the guy, and I can't remember his name now, but the, who was who had been Hart's, you know, campaign person, he sort of, he was telling everybody all the awful things he had done before he died, I guess, uh, you know, confessing his sins. But that guy did not tell Hart until recently, and that was 20 years ago that he was told that Atwater basically torpedoed, sunk that campaign. And the reason he did is that he said, by the time I got there, a couple of years after the campaign and everything, Hart was doing other things. He said, I didn't want to bring that up. It's going to be like, you know, yeah, you know, that that's, you know, but now this guy thought he was dying of cancer. He's been in remission. But before that, he went and told Gary Hart. But it was literally back then, you know, the question that the question that Matto had, which I thought was interesting, is that if Gary Hart had been able to get through all that, didn't have that happen, had become the candidate and had won what would the what would the last 25, 30 years have been like? Well, I mean, the, 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 who would have been, you know, who would have been president? Yeah, but we would have. We always proffer that question, you know, if so and so this hadn't happened to so and so, and they yeah. had won, blah 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 blah. What would have happened if just uh, here's one that's that's a little more closer to home? What if if um, um, uh, Al Gore had hung in there long mm-hmm. enough to win that election? Uh, yeah. How would it, things have changed? We don't know. We really don't no, know. No, of course Would a Trump just, have even you know, happened? It's an interesting you know. thought. Yeah, it would have been interesting. What would we look like if Gary Hart was actual president? Yeah, had been had gotten through either four or eight years of it. What would what would have happened later? Who would have been up there running against him? Who would have would the, well, we have had either or both well, bushes? Oh, my, would we my, have had you know? My question. Well, uh, my question. I'd like to go back yeah. what Jeff said. How do we do that to Trump? Mm-hmm. Well, oh, yeah. I, I have a bigger question. Uh, you know, we we have we elected in this country a re- reality show host, a man of no particular ability uh, for running a country, let alone a business. To be very honest with you, yeah, since uh, his but, dad but pretty much, was, but, he, but his, his, his entire oh, his entire so image money. was yeah. created by uh, television. Uh, and if you if you go back and watch some of those apprentices, I saw a couple of scenes from some of them. Oh, they're terrible. No, no. But what you notice, really? how well, oh, no, wait a minute, is how well they light him, how well oh, they oh, make yeah, him yeah. up. They make him look like the in charge executive. You know, yeah. that's the image America voted for. Uh, no, and, and they voted for themselves. No, no, they vote. They voted because they they heard Donald Trump knows how to make money. He knows how to. Wrong. Put, put, <laughs> yeah. wrong. Power. Don't forget, Hillary was not a great candidate. No, no. Yeah. She, she seemed disingenuous. I'm sorry. 
than he did. You helped him. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Three million more votes than he did. That's fine, mm -hmm. but they weren't the three million votes that would get you elected. That's the problem. <laughs> okay. So the, where so, you got those so, votes? So, so, so what we have to say is her ground game wasn't very good. His yeah. was. Those votes yeah, weren't dispersed through buttfuck Sylvanias and buttfuck counties across all the fucking... Also, uh, she may have won that. She may, she may have swung those electoral votes if it, that one debate where he kind of trailed her around like a, oh, yeah. like a, <sighs> oh, a shark. If she had looked at him and just said, I think you should stop that right now. Mm. I think she would have won the election. Sit down, Donald. Three feet, jackass. But, Three feet. Yeah, really. yeah. yeah. So, but the other thing we have to discuss with, with Hillary is the fact that I completely believe that she went British Why Donald Trump went American. She was using all the old tactics from the Democrat playbook, and here came Trump just firing at will, hiding behind trees, and she fell like it was Yeah, it's the a very British. good analogy because the, the Indians fought the British by simply hiding behind trees and shooting mm -hmm. arrows at them and killing them. And they thought that was a rather uncivilized way to fight because you're supposed to get in the line and just walk yeah. forward and start shooting. And what you do like when you change the playbook from yep. what somebody like Hillary felt comfortable with, she doesn't know how to handle it. Yeah, but see, I don't, I'm not blaming her on that one. I'm blaming the jackass behind her on that. Because he did all of the same little bill, oh, no, all the same fuck-ups that he normally does, and it hurt her yet look, again, look, look. and that gave what, them... What I, what I said is that whole election was the latest production of the, the, uh, the movie The Producers. What if we do everything we could possibly do wrong? If we lose the election, well, I'll have a lot of money that I get to keep after it's over with. And also, I can probably start a news network. We can do a lot of things. And all of a sudden, it's election night. And like in the producers, they look at each other and go, where do we go right? Mm -hmm. You know, we, he did everything that should have not gotten him elected. So, But you have to say... Except for Putin threw a shitload of energy at Trump. And that was so you can't say this is 100 percent Hillary. You know something? You I think I think, Renee, to say that the Russians fixed it for Trump and granted they tried and they were in there meddling. But I don't think that's the reason she lost. I know a lot of people oh. who I know a lot of people who voted for Trump because they really believe that Hillary is crooked. And yeah. they said, there's no up. way. Yeah, my brother is one of them. And my brother, I ne he told me a year after he did it because he, 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 he couldn't bear to tell me. And then he told me like six months ago that he voted because he Does said, he I have just, any regrets, Rob? Oh, yeah. See, my father doesn't yet. But he's like, he's, he's like, I just thought she was the biggest crook. And I didn't want to put this big crook in the White House. Right. But it was all marketing. Uh, well, yes, uh, Charlene has her hand up and then uh, Tom. No, I've just been uh, trying to put my hand up for a while because I always remember, Alex, that you were the one that brought it up during the election. Hillary had too much baggage. Like all that white water stuff and the Monica Lewinsky. Yeah. Like this week, um, she did an interview. Where was she oh, yeah. then, Hillary? <laughs> they brought up uh, Monica. Monica. Lewinsky, yeah. And, and she they, stuck they're her like foot in it. her now about yeah, Me she Too did. with Monica right. Lewinsky in retrospect to the whole event. Now. <laughs> oh, yeah. And everybody hates Hillary okay, again. We, she needs we, to go away. We, yeah, she, she does. Yeah. Yeah. Thank away. you very much. We know. Said, Back thanks to the forest. By right. the way, we no longer have a full house. We have a royal flush now. Because Jack <laughs> not only needs to go away, she needs to take that bitch Nancy Pelosi and that asshole Chuck Schumer with her. By the way, Jack, how's your wife doing? Uh, I like Chuck. Well, my, my wife is home. Uh, uh, what did she do? Everything went fairly well. They found one little complication that they weren't expecting, but uh, I knew she was okay last night when she said, Hey, have you fed the cats yet? Well, then you know she's fine. You yeah. know she's fine. And then when I picked her up this morning, uh, uh, she was she was saying, You got here early. <laughs> oh, I figured, well, I'm she's doing great. 
<laughs> well, I'm glad she's okay. Jack was a little concerned because Jack's been through this before, and the last time he had a wife die on him, you mm -hmm. know, oh, and oh. Uh, so... I I told Don, I said, you can't die on me because pretty soon the district attorneys are going to start looking at me. Right. Yeah, exactly. 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 And, and, you're, it the husband. and you're a black guy, so it's going to be really bad. You, you know, my bad, my bad was I forgot that you weren't going to be on last night. Oh, and you said okay. it. And when you I know. tuned in, I went, is he having trouble getting the show on? And I sent you a text and you wrote back and said, no, I'm at the hospital. And I went, oh, my God, I'm such a fucking idiot. I'm just... I'm starting to lose it. I got to start writing down notes a lot, you know. Well, Alex, I hate to tell you this, but but uh, managing people is a skill that you only get by managing people. You know. Yeah, if yeah. I, no, no, uh, but what I've got to do is I've got to start like with the movie Memento, start tattooing on myself all these helps. notes to remember I, things. I heard this conversation though, and I had to call in about it uh, because uh, this is the only country in the world that has a two-step electoral process for its leader. That's that's bullshit, as my grandpa yeah, Oh, it is. Absolutely. Now, now, we're stuck with it. We're stuck with it because the small states are not going to want to go along with a uh, constitutional amendment to get rid of it. Right. But, uh, you know, we've got to tell people on the left, you got to vote like a beast. A good example in Georgia right now, there's some black folks, but Black Boats Matters, that has some folks really scared because uh, there were uh, some news I read today. They are registering more people in Georgia and Texas than have ever registered this well, far. Well, you know, I, I think we should take something out of the Republican vote, uh, playbook and say, you know, uh, everybody vote and vote often. Yes, 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 you know, two, three Chicago times. Chicago style. Yeah, yeah, Chicago style. Yes, Tom. <laughs> yeah, um, I was, to, for Jack, I was just telling you earlier that the, uh, in the show earlier that, that, uh, that the early voting is actually started in Georgia, and people are just voting in droves, Good. which reminds me, actually, did you hear about the bus? The, the, yes. the yes. black voters just there, heard about them. And they pulled them up pulled them over and made them get off the bus because they were convinced that, that they had stolen the bus from whatever senior. It was like a bunch of older black voter people. And it was like, oh, we're, how are we sure you didn't steal this bus from the senior center? <laughs> no. I, so what I heard this whole situation was is that <clears throat> uh, all the people <clears throat> were at the scene. By the way, these are seniors. Mm -hmm. This is a senior citizen event. So there was a whole bunch of black people, or excuse me, a whole bunch of voters at this event. They got excited. They were, they could go vote because early, it was the first day of early voting. They got them on the facilities bus and some stupid fucking Republican called up and said, there's our, our bus that for our center is driving a bunch of Democrats to go vote. Well, you've and almost it's not the, allowed. You've almost got the story right, Renee. The oh, story see, was, still... <laughs> the story was uh, Black Votes Matters had arranged for that bus to be there. The question was because they were leaving from a county facility. And like most counties, uh, and I can't remember the county that, that it was in, and I should know because I lived in Georgia for almost two years. Uh, county facilities are not supposed to be used or be involved in electioneering. Now, uh, but, but, let's, but, but let's set the, you know, the record right. Yeah. Uh, Kicking a whole bunch of old people off of a bus is just disgusting. Yeah. No, but Republicans Sorry. have always said, and, and you can find this on the internet, I think it was Richard Vigory who said, we don't win elections by getting more people to vote. Oh, yeah. That's we win elections true. by getting the right people to vote. And Democrats got to take the gloves off. Beto O'Rourke finally took the gloves off against Ted Cruz. I didn't see much of the debate between the two of them. <laughs> Called him Ryan Ted. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I, uh, Ted chickened out of that last debate. No, no, no. He didn't. Oh, no, he didn't. It's one this week. But, uh, you know, we got to start saying, hey, Donald Trump, he's been lying to you from the get-go, and he's lying to you today. 
Hey, listen, we've run out of time. Uh, time for you to go, Jack. You better get out of here so you can go do your <laughs> show. Uh, but he's up next with the intersection. Uh, Tom Amaguchi, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Rob, always a pleasure. Two nights in a row. Yippee, yippee, fuck. Uh, 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 Charlene Martinez, thank you so much. Uh, John Rockwell, always great to see you. Renee, hello there from Hawaii. Uh, we got Jeff Stein. I almost forget you're in Hawaii because the picture is so clear that, you know. It's I can amazing. show you the sunset. Uh, Scott Boddicker, thank you for being a Rembrandt painting tonight. Very nice. Very, very nice. Either that or the bo a box of cigars, one or the other. Uh, Kevin, thank you, and thank you to Brian. All of you, wave to goodbye to our wonderful, wonderful people out there. There they are, the Citizens Panel, folks. That's it for us tonight. Uh, we're uh, we're out of here now. Uh, this is uh, the end of our little show, but uh, Jack Bishop is next with the uh, intersection, and that will be followed very closely at uh, one o'clock this morning by uh, uh, the uh, fine people at the uh, Connections, and then uh, tomorrow night. Uh, 9.30, it's Damian Chaplin, and yes, you know it, The Exchange, and I'll be here again 10 o'clock tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody.